Alma Hernandez, I'm a research assistant at the University of New Mexico. What motivated me was that I grew up in Juarez. I was born in the U.S., but I grew up in Juarez for the first 10 years of my life, and I have always commuted. Um, I think what motivated me to do this is that I already had a connection with colonias in Juarez, and I had been studying children for a couple of years. Um, I have been studying, uh, having studies in, in Juarez since 2007. Um, and all of a sudden when the violence came in, it, it just became an interest. How is the violence affecting families' everyday life? So while I was studying children's well-being, it evolved to how does the violence affect them? So what we understand so far is that it, they're being isolated. I think overall what this study showed us was that they're isolated from economic resources, not only children but their families, um, since we're looking at the, at the family structure. Um, they're affected through economic resources because businesses are being extorted and not only that, but Mexico has lost a lot of tourism, which was one of the main um, employers in El Paso was tourism um, businesses, small businesses. And now that the violence is so prevalent, there's it's really lost most of its tourism. So there's a loss of jobs, which limits the parents from providing the resources that, ki that children need. And on top of it, the children are not socializing outside like they're used to. They're not riding your, their bikes outside like they used to. And they're, they're being limited in their, in, in their um, ways of socializing with other children. And we believe that this overall is isolating them from cultural, economic, and social resources overall. Okay, so some of the causes are, for example, the, when I was doing the interviews, a lot of the families told me that they, they had a, in, hours that were not regular anymore. For example, one mother told me my, my husband used to work in construction and now he hardly gets called in or they'll send him home early because there isn't this demand for business. So this is how fam this is the family's job and their economic resource and it's being limited by the current violence because because of the violence there's a less of a demand for construction there's also inflexible hours and businesses closed and close um, closes and on top of it they've been hit with an economic recession at the same time that the drug war started um, maquiladoras were not being open at the same hours that they used to they cut down days uh, business days to be able to um, remain open, but at the same time, families lost part of their income while they were undergoing this, which, which involved the families that I interviewed. Um, in terms of social resources, like I mentioned before, children are being isolated. They're just not going outside like they used to because the families are, are afraid that something might happen to them. So they limit their interactions with other children because they rather keep them inside. And what the mothers told me too is that they don't feel comfortable navigating the, ci the city, um, so they limit their time outside of the house, which limits their overall social resources. Um, with that in mind, we think that that's gonna later affect the child's um, cultural capital because they're not learning from other children. Okay. And uh, what, what conclusion would you, would you draw from this, from this study? I think that the conclusion that uh, we are trying to illustrate here, and we're trying to paint a picture of what happens to the family when there's a violent context. And what we're tr I think that what this is illustrating for us is the isolation. It's an isolation from economic resources, social resources, and cultural resources. Um, and I think that that's the prevailing message, um, is that these, these resources that were already low to begin with because most of the families that we studied were of um, low economic resources. They're being depleted because of the violence. And we like to think that it, they're being isolated. Sure, um, one, of the iso uh, one of the limitations of the study was that uh, at some point, uh, the university prohibited us from continuing, the researchers from continuing research in, in Ciudad Juarez. Um, so we had to get creative. Um, we had a working, we already had a working relationship with a community group called Gente a Jabor de Gente with Vicky Ramos and Carlos Vasquez. And they really facilitated for us to continue. Uh, Vicky Ramos did the 16 interviews for the, uh, for the study and she also facilitated me being able to send cameras to 
to families so that they, they can narrow that gap that was created by the, by the rule that we could no longer, that researchers could no longer go. Um, so with that camera, it really provided a picture, but it wasn't enough to be able to go and see it. Um, I think it would have helped us interpret the, the results better. Um, also, um, also I'm, it would have been great to get a bigger sample, but again, with the, with the current violence, we just w wanted to limit the, um, how much we exposed our, our interviewer, and so we were limited in that. Um, the children, the, the, the mothers we interviewed, the 16 families we interviewed were parents of children so from zero to five years old. Um, and the, in terms of, the, it was a re relatively homogeneous sample, so I, they, they were low-income families, very, very poor. In terms of recommendations for the government, there needs to be more resources provided um, in terms of employment. Now that if hours are being cut, there needs to be better hours um, for families. But also, we think that maybe if there was a daycare inside of the maquilas or in the place of work, the parents would be more likely to be able to have their children while they work, and that wouldn't limit them so much. Because one thing we saw in the study was that the mothers would forego their employment so that they would stay home because at the time they didn't feel like it was the time to leave the child in somebody else's care. They wanted to be there and they also didn't feel that they could trust the daycare with their children at the time. So we believe that maybe providing that, that resource inside of the job is gonna, might help them. Um, on top of that, I think that it would be important to provide safe places for children to play. At the end of the day, the most important thing is the youth and they're being isolated through several, they're isolated in several ways in their lives. So it, there needs to be spaces where they feel that it, they can go and play and socialize and not be affected by the violence or not feel like they're threatened by it. And in terms of families overall, the, these spaces are needed because, because of the violence, there's people go home earlier, they're not traveling across the city to see their friends, they're not maintaining their relationships because they're trying to, to be safe, but at the same time, they're foregoing their, they're limiting the, the they're being limited in their social capital. Um, so we believe that maybe with with safer spaces, that would be better. And on and at the end of the day, there's that violence has to end one day. You just have to say it. But the families themselves, hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think that. It's very hard for me to answer that question because at the end of the day, I don't live in Juarez, so it's hard for me to put myself there. I think that the bet, and, and this is coming from the families directly when they were telling me, they were like, we just have to live our lives. At some point, we have to live our lives and we have to go to the grocery store and the kids need to go out and play. So I think what's important is to live your life, but they can't control what's going on outside of, outside of the house. I think what's important is that researchers should think of ways to continue researching the violence in Juarez, but at the same time, considering how violent um, the, the environment is, is to think of creative ways of being able to study this, but also not put the interviewer or the researcher or the participant um, um, that we're studying in, in danger. And I think that that's the most important thing um, that one one can say after doing the study um, based on its limitations is how can we do this in a way that we're all okay.